Hi, this is Grand Vice 8, and this is my advanced TFT guide. This guide is for players wanting to get Master, GM, Challenger, or even Top 10. We're going to go over seven concepts that are important for a player to understand if they want to climb the ladder. You don't have to do all these concepts well, but the more of these you can do better, the better off you'll be and the higher you'll climb. Think of your LP as a tube, and the tube has markings, silver, gold, plat, diamond, you know, challenger, 1k LP, 2k LP. And think of these concepts as liquid in the tube. You know, you put in you put in some scouting, the liquid rises. You know, you put in some uh, some transitioning, liquid rises. You, you econ better, the liquid goes up. So the more of these you can do well, the higher you'll climb. You don't have to do any one of these perfectly, but you know, just get something down and you'll be good to go. So first off, first concept: make strong boards. You want good front line, good back line, and you want to minimize losses. Number two. Know yourself and don't scuff up your transitions. If it's going to be a big transition you know you can't do, you know, maybe rolled around before. You don't want to be taking like 15, 20 damage coming out of a creep round because your whole board's one start. Three, slam items, slam them early, and this saves you HP. Make sure they're flexible, make sure you know what's strong. Four, scout. If you can get more value from your units and keep your carry safe and you can target enemy priority targets, you'll be in a good spot. Five, know the meta, know what's strong, know what comps are good, know what units are good, and know what items are strong and you should be slamming. Six, econ, the more, the better. The, the more econ you have, the more likely you are to hit your board later on, and it's not worth throwing away your HP for one and two gold, so keep that in mind. And then last one is commit. At some point, you have to commit. Keeping options open is great, and it gives you flexibility later on, but at some point, you have to commit uh, you have to maximize your econ and you have to make items. So let's begin with frontline versus backline. You want a good mix of frontline units and backline units. You want enough tanks in the front to survive and buy time for your team uh, and provide utility. And you want enough units in the back to, you know, again, provide utility or, you know, just give your team enough damage to where you can either win a fight or minimize your losses. So a bit, uh, just to give you a little tip, uh, a lot of the times assassins will, even if you don't have enough frontline, assassins can kill a lot of the enemy backline, so you don't take as much of a loss. So you want a good mix of front and backline units and front and backline items. Next, I would say if you want to climb, your best bet is watching streams. You don't have to, but it can really help. Uh, this could help you learn new tricks, get a better read on the meta, and learn comps you may not be super comfortable on. Next, probably one of the hardest things to do in all of TFT is transitioning well. A lot of the time, you know, people miss units, or they don't know which units to buy, or they don't know which units to slam, and, you know, they'll come out of a creep round running one-star army, and they'll take infinite damage. So the best way to get better at this, I would say focus on one or two comps. And you play nothing but these comps. And this will help you learn what units go in the comp. Uh, it tells you, it, you learn which ones to grab and which ones to ignore and it can speed up the, uh, it can really speed up your transition. It could also give you an idea of what items to slam, which items to not, and just like the, the fewer things you have to think about, the better off you'll be playing this comp. So like you don't have to play the comp perfectly, but the better you can play it, uh, the better off you'll be, and if you just focus on one or two comps, you'll be able to do this better. I see a lot of masters and GM players come out of creep rounds running a one-star army. They take 15, 16, 17 HP, and that usually makes a big difference in the rounds afterwards. If it's going to be a really big transition and you know it's going to be hard, a lot of the time you can start rolling the round before, like during the creep round, and that way you have two turns to make your transition. Um, if you're not going to have enough time to finish during the round, at the very least, you know, put a decent board together and just ma make sure your positioning's right. Make sure your tanks are in the front, not in the back. Make sure it carries are in the back and safe. You know, maybe scout a little bit. And even though you're not done transitioning, you can have a, your good positioning can help you, if not win the fight, it can help you take a better loss. So again, try to master one or two comps before moving on to something else. And that way you can really get good at transitioning for that comp. Items. 
Making items early is very important. You want to make strong, flexible items, but you have to know when to slam suboptimal items. Sometimes you'll have multiple components and your goal is to just use those components. Like if you have three cloaks, you need to use some of those cloaks. You know, like you have three cloaks and a sword. You want to go for GA, bro, you need to use some of those cloaks because you know, you, you have one sword, it's going to be flexible. It's going to be really hard to use those extra cloaks. So you also want to build strong items. Although this can be, this can be hard to know unless you have a good read on the meta. So again, have a good read on the meta. Uh, you know, if you're watching this guide, you probably understand what the meta is. So, you know, just try to make some good items. You want to make items that are flexible. You want, you want items that you have item holders for. So if you have a Morello, that can go on a Morgana later. You can put on Tristan early game and that can carry items for later. So next you want to understand the item drop system. Basically there's a bag and every time there's a carousel, one of each component is placed in the bag. And every time a minion drops an item, it is taken out of the bag. So if you haven't gotten any bows or rods, you're more likely to get those components. If you've gotten already three chains, you probably won't get any more chains because there's none in the bag. So just having this uh, in mind can help you know what to go for a carousel and it can give you an idea of what you're likely to drop later. Okay, next is value. Getting more value from your units is super important. If you have uh, something like a Garen that has an AOE spin, you want to position it that more enemies gather around it. If you have an Aatrox or a Blitzcrank, you want to position it to where it hooks enemy units. If you have an Assassin, you want to get on the enemy carries. And again, you want to minimize the value your opponent gets. So if your opponent has an AOE stun in the middle, you want to play your units around it. If they have an Aatrox or a Blitzcrank, you want to make sure they don't get hooked. If they have Assassins, you want to keep your carry safe. The way you do this is scouting and tracking. The more effective you are at scouting, the better off you'll be. It helps you get the most of your units that can let you win a fight even if your comp or items aren't as strong as your opponents. Uh, I also recommend tracking your opponents as this will give you a good idea of who you will be fighting next. If you don't know how to do this, I have another video about tracking and scouting that will be linked on the screen. Scouting can also give you an idea of what people in the lobby are playing. So if you're thinking about transitioning into a Kale comp, but you scout around and you see there's six Kales gone, you might need a backup plan. Next, probably the most important thing in this game is knowing which comps, champs, and items are strong. Because if you wanna win more, it can be as simple as playing just the strongest comps and champs. This can be a little hard, although towards the end of a patch, matters generally get pretty solved and you know players know what to play, everyone kind of understands what the meta is. However, if you have this information at the beginning of a patch or before other players get it, you can generally climb a lot of LP. We've seen a lot of people hit rank one just because they knew Elder Woods were broken or you know just because they were the first players to get really good at playing Slayers. So the sooner you can figure what's, uh, what's strong, this, uh, the more of an advantage you'll have in something like TFT. There's a, there's a lot of ways, there's a couple ways to do this. First of all, you can use your eyes. If you see, if you see a unit's popping off, you'll be like, oh, that's kind of strong. Let me try it out myself. Uh, you know, don't run your mouth about it if you know something's strong. You just kind of keep it quiet and abuse it while you can. Personally, what I like to do is I like to use StatSite. I, I like using TFT Coach. Uh, it goes over win rates and average placements of you know various units and you can click on a unit to have an idea of you know what are strong items on this unit you can see the win rates of those items on a unit and this kind of gives me an idea of you know what to play and what to stay away from next we have econ everybody knows econ is super important the more you have the more likely you will be to spike later the more likely you are to hit your comp and two star all your units Early Econ is worth a lot more than late Econ. Making 10 early game uh, is a lot more important than making like, you know, 50 instead of 40 late game. So later on, it, it, could, be, it could be worth to lose Econ. Uh, on the subject of losing Econ, generally you'll have a decision to make early game whether you want to hold pairs or whether you want to sell for gold. Uh, a good rule of thumb I use is if I don't have established frontline, I will lose Econ to hold frontline pairs. 
Because uh, at the end of the day, if you're taking 10 each round early game, you're just dead no matter how much cold you have later. And the same goes for backline. Uh, basically, if my board is stable, uh, you know, I'll probably make econ for units that, you know, that really don't make that big of a difference for my board. But if my board is not stable, uh, you kind of have to lose econ just so, you, so you're able to stabilize your board. Uh, another part of that is uh, four cost units. A lot of the time you'll get like an early four cost unit and it's something you, you may never play. It's something you might play, but something you may never play or you may, may not play for a long time. And in those cases, it could be better to sell it even though you might want it later. Uh, general rule of thumb is if you're not playing a unit, you probably shouldn't lose econ for it unless it's super important. So just uh, try to maximize your econ but and use your HP as a resource. But keep in mind that if your HP reaches zero, you're out. You know, you can use it as a resource to an extent, but a lot of the time you, you kind of want to roll so you're not taking big losses. Next, commitment. Uh, committing is something you don't want to do too early unless you have to. It's generally good to leave your options open, but at a certain point you kind of have to commit because you can't greed your items and you can't greed, all, uh, you know, you can't hold a bunch of different units on your bench because you might play this or you might play that. Uh, generally, you look for commitment by, uh, like, you look for direction first. So if you get, like, an RFC and a Kale, you're like, okay, I can probably play Kale. I'm already here. Let me just go ahead and commit, build items, and pick up units for it. Uh, sometimes you won't really know what you play. Your items will be kind of ambiguous. You won't really you have any direction. And if you're win streaking, that's perfectly fine because you can usually afford to hold those units, right? But if you're in a weak spot, if your board's weak, if your econ's not great, a lot of the time you have to just commit. Um, there's always a risk to it, but it can help if you scout. That way you can get an idea of what everybody else in the lobby is playing. So generally, uh, you do want to commit at some point. If you're in a rough spot, you, you have to commit to something. And we basically call that playing for a fifth. So let's say you have a couple options ahead of you, your HP is low, your board is weak. You usually, you're gonna have to slam items for something and you're gonna wanna min-max your chances of hitting that comp. So you're gonna have to sell all your possible pivots and you're gonna have to like just slam the items for that comp and you're probably gonna have to roll aggressively for it. And this way, if you do manage to hit that comp, you'll, there's a good chance you won't go eighth. There's a pretty, there's a pretty good chance you can even top four, you can maybe get a fifth out of it. And it's a lot better than keeping your options that go open and either hitting it and going seventh because you lost so much HP greeting or just not having enough money to two star your units because you kept all these possible pivots open. And then if you end up missing and you go eighth, you know, whatever, you would have gone eighth anyways. And you know, we call this playing not to lose. You're not always gonna be in the spot to win or you know, even play for a top four. So knowing when to not to play for not eighth can save you a lot of LP in the long run. In these doomed games, I, re I recommend slamming items early uh, and rolling aggressively to save HP. Because if your HP is low, then you need to be really strong uh, because any loss you know, can send you to one life. A lot of the times in these spots, you can salvage some placement by not leveling and maybe going for like a, a three star unit, like a random three star. It really depends on the meta. It really depends on what your outs are and it just depends on what items you have. So like, you know, let's say you have a GA Morello and you have a bunch of cannons, you know, you can just reroll for a random cannon even though it might not be the comp you wanna play eventually. A lot of the time getting these random three star units or rolling aggressively can secure you a fifth or sixth place that would have been an eighth if you just played it like on normal tempo. Like if you just play a normal comp where you try to go eight, a lot of the time you're too behind, so you just have to like kind of commit early, roll aggressively, and just hope the other people die before you. This is also called knowing your outs. This is basically the same as committing, um, but it's good to know what to play for. Like if you know you're guaranteed a top two, but your only way of getting first is like a two star set, you know, with these specific items. And you know, you see that set at the carousel, or you see that item at the carousel, and you're like, okay, on the small chance that I hit this, I can get a better placement. So, you know, you take that off carousel and maybe you hit it and you get a first or maybe you don't, you know, you get a second anyways. So you kind of have to evaluate that risk versus reward. But when this is most important is like when you're like in a pretty bad spot 
or you know not in a great spot and you know like going eight won't matter or going nine won't matter and a lot of the time you're just better off sitting at your level and rolling so you know you can sit a seven and roll for a random three cost uh three star or you know you can stay at eight and you're like oh you know maybe i hit some legendary two stars at eight you know you never know because if i go eight nine you know i'm dead anyways so just like having an idea of of your outs can help Again, this is probably like a, like kind of like a min max concept that won't really matter until Challenger, but it can definitely get you some LP in the long run. So, I mean, that's that's the gist of it. Just to give you a little summary of all the points. Number one, make strong boards, have good frontline, have good backline. This will allow you to win a lot of rounds and minimize losses. Number two. Know yourself and don't scuff your transitions. If you know it's gonna be a big transition, roll early. You don't wanna take a lot of damage. Make sure you keep your HP high. Number three, slam items early. This will give you a lot of early board strength. You'll be able to win rounds. This will give you extra gold. You'll be able to do damage to other opponents and you'll be able to save your own HP. So even if it's scuffed in, uh, in the end game, you know, you'll have that HP buffer and this can usually give you some placements. Four, scout. The more you scout, the more value you can get from your units, the more of an idea you'll have of what's contested. And you know, in an auto battler, when it's all RNG, the one thing you have impact over is where you put your units. So, you know, the better you can do that, the better off you'll be. Track your opponents, you'll have a good time. Five, know the meta. Know what units are strong, know what items are strong. Just knowing this one thing can get you challenger. Like if you just play the most broken comps and you play it every game and you play it well, you'll probably get challenger. Six, econ. The more the better, but don't throw your HP away for one or two gold. And seven, at some point you just have to commit to a comp. You have to maximize your items for it. You have to maximize your econ for it because if you just keep infinite options open, even if you hit, you'll probably be behind the curve because other people econed and just like forced something. So I hope this helped you. Uh, if you get these concepts down, uh, without a doubt, I'm sure you'll climb. And thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Can you say Uga Booga GB8 game?